Fan. Hi, you. Mm, good morning. Uh, this is Fu Pan Li from Ant Group. Uh, actually, uh, there should be another, uh, my co speaker, Ji Yue Ma, should be here. Oh, okay, uh, Ji Yue Ma uh, is not uh, uh, Alibaba's Jack Ma. <laughs> uh, but he's, uh, he has some visa issues today, so he couldn't come here today. So I, I will give the talk uh, lonely. Uh, okay, uh, let's begin. Uh, first, as a general rules, I will give a discussion about the topic. Uh, first, I will talk about what is the card kit hinders. Uh, uh, last day, uh, Peng Tao has given some uh, more details about uh, card kit hinders. So today, I will just give a short descrip description. Uh, second, uh, I will talk about uh, what is service mesh? Uh, let me do a simple poll. Uh, how many people do you know, familiar with the service mesh? Please up your hands. Oh, thank you. Great. Uh, second, third, uh, I will talk about uh, Kata Container's security threat model and where the service mesh uh, will take some issues to cut a container security threat model. And first, uh, we will talk, uh, I will talk about uh, uh, the service mesh development uh, uh, direction, the sad colorless service mesh, and how cut containers uh, will incorporate with this sad colorless service mesh. Uh, last, uh, I will show a simple demo. So, uh, what is card containers? Uh, as we know, uh, the tra traditional containers, just like the RANC container, it uses the uh, Linux kernel's uh, virtualization to isolate the resources, such as use the namespace, uh, the IPC namespace, and network namespace, and mount namespace, as etc., to isolate the resources. And then it will use the uh, the C groups to conjunct the resources it use, such as the CPU and memory. But uh, for this case, uh, all of the workloads on the traditional containers, uh, they share the same kernel in the node. So if some uh, workloads uh, call some critical uh, kernel six cores, uh, which will use some uh, kernel's lock, it will prevent the other workloads. So uh, the traditional containers have some issues which they may be, uh, they may be influenced, influenced with each other. So uh, card containers will use the VM to uh, reduce those influence between each other. And we put the uh, workloads in a VM. Thus, the, the, work, the work, workloads will in the VM, and they don't share the same kernel as the node. So even some untrusted workloads uh, will take some breaks, or some OM event, or some uh, other creative issues. It won't influence the its neighbors. So uh, the big difference between the color containers and the traditional containers is that color containers can uh, embrace the untrust workload. Now, uh, let me talk about what is service mesh. OK, uh, it's only a brief uh, description. Uh, as we all know, uh, before the service mesh, we use, uh, we developers will develop uh, their programs, will deal with the network issues, uh, will deal with uh, the data encryption and decryption, and uh, the find the service uh, and each other, such as 
and the other network failure is try, and those issues, both of those functions will uh, combine with the uh, business logic. They all in one process. But there are some issues with this issue with this case. Uh, if there are some uh, if there are some issues in their uh, network issues, they should uh, rebuild their programs. So uh, the first three smash generation is that they split those logic from the uh, business codes. They separate it into a library so that uh, most of the uh, programmers will share the same library. But there are also some issues with this case. Since uh, the library is the language specific, maybe uh, some, base, some program use the C language and the other will use Java languages and the other will use the Go languages. So they should prepare uh, the specific SDKs for every languages. But to maintain so many uh, language that SDKs will be take a lot of effort. Uh, so the service mesh evolved into the next generation, the sidecar generation. Uh, so in order to re reduce these issues, they split those uh, SDK codes into a separate or dedicated pro process. And the workloads will communicate with the uh, mesh sidecar through the traditional socket or network socket. The program will just, uh, uh, as they did before, to access their service through the uh, AFNet unit socket. And the service mesh sidecar will inject uh, some uh, IP table rules to hijack their network flow into the service mesh. So this sidecar service mesh is transparency to the workloads. Also, uh, in addition to uh, in addition to add some uh, storage discarding, uh, resilient connectivity, and identity-based security issues, and uh, they also add some other functions or features into the sidecar service mesh, such as the observability and tracing events, and even some level seven traffic management. So this this series, they enriched the service mesh. Talk about the service mesh, let's talk about where the sidecar service mesh will bring uh, some issues to cut containers. Uh, as I talked before, uh, cut containers will cut embrace the, some untrust workload into a guest. But the service mesh will also, as a side car, will also put into the guest. Service mesh, uh, it's a infrastructure, which is not the, which is not belonging to the workloads. Sometimes the service mesh will take some key, some security keys and some certifications in its memory. And this is a secret data. But the untrust workloads would break out their the traditional containers limited and it will escape. So they, they can stolen or cut or watch or even uh, take out the certifications or the security keys from the sidecar. 
so if uh, malicious codes or users take, got those certifications and the keys, they will send some at attack to the entire service mesh service. So this side car will break Kata container security threat model. In order to fix these issues, we want to we want to move the side car out of the sandbox or move out of the guest. Thus, even the malicious code or malicious users, they break out the traditional containers boundaries. They couldn't catch, they couldn't uh, stolen the mesh side cars, pride keys or certifications. Since uh, we think the VM boundaries is always strange and uh, we assume the traditional uh, users couldn't break out the VM boundary. So if we move out the side car out of the guest, how did the data uh, communicate between the application and the service mesh? Uh, the left side is the traditional uh, mode which the side car is in the guest. Thus, the application container will just as normal, they will send some uh, app Unix socket operations and send data from the socket uh, to into the network static in the guest. Then uh, the side car, service mesh side car, uh, injected the RP table rules, which will hijack this network flow and will redirect those network data from the container to the service mesh. And the service mesh will catch those data and to do their uh, process, such as the service discovery and load balance and uh, uh, data increasing or decreasing, and et cetera. And then they will send the data from the network. But if we move the service mesh from the guest out of the uh, guest, out of the guest, how the, how the data will trash through uh, from the container to the service mesh side car? Since we moved the side car out of the sandbox of the guest, we put the network. We also moved the network from the guest out of the guest. And the network is only uh, in the port net number six. Uh, actually, uh, we proposed a solution to fix these issues. Uh, we use the TSI, which is transparent socket impression impersonation, which uh, it, it was developed by the Lab Kiran project. Uh, what is TSI? Uh, TSI, it means that uh, it's embedded into the gas kernel, which will hijack the standard uh, F-unit socket uh, operations, uh, such as uh, create a new socket, and bind a, a network address, uh, listen, accept, et cetera, this six calls. The TSI will hijack these six calls and transform those traditional socket operation into a VSOC operation. So uh, the application container will just as just what they do before. They just uh, call the traditional uh, socket uh, six calls, but the TSI in the gas kernel will transform this socket operation into the VSOC. 
and uh, the VSOC backend in the VM, VM it will uh, accept those VSOC operations and they, such as they received the data or received the accept uh, operations and then they, they direct the data to the host kernel's network static. At the same time, the service mesh in the host, which is not in the gas now. The start car will also inject some RP tables in the host network namespace. So the VSOX backend sends the data into the network static, network stack, and the RP tables rules will hijack those network streams and will redirect this network data to the service mesh side car. And then the service mesh car will deal with those data and redirect them to, as a, to the peer endpoint. So is this end of the story? Of course. Uh, as, uh, as I said before, uh, the service mesh has evolved from the uh, single uh, process to the SDK lab or library service mesh. Then it evolved into the sidecar service mesh. But how or where the directions the service mesh will evolve? Since the service mesh community has realized the sidecar service mesh has many uh, drawbacks, such as uh, for uh, every one port, there will be a sidecar to cooperate with it. So uh, the sidecar will cost many uh, resources, such as CPU or memory, etc. So uh, the service mesh community tried to uh, reduce so many sidecars. Thus, they uh, afforded the sidecarless service mesh. Uh, this is two mainstream service mesh communities. One is Cilium service mesh, and the other is S2. Both of them uh, afforded the sidecarless service mesh solutions. Uh, the Cilium service mesh, they try to use the eBPF in the kernel to uh, hijack the network data. And they uh, removed the sidecar and they put one eBPF programs into the, uh, the kernel and these this eBPF programs will hijack all the workloads on the node. So uh, there's there will be not uh, reduced so many, reduce the numbers of the sidecars. Also, uh, the, the eBPF will try to deal with the R2 or R3, uh, or even R3 level, the network, such as the load balance, uh, and even some uh, data incorporation, uh, decoration. But some R7, uh, issues, some uh, R7 operations such as the ATTM, uh, ATPS or ATML and even some WebSocket protocols, they also use the, uh, a node program uh, in VoI to deal with it. For H2 uh, community, they afforded another uh, another solution. They split the sidecar uh, into two parts. One is the node the tunnel proxy. Yes, there is only one the tunnel proxy in one node. There's no sidecar. And uh, all of the workloads on the node will uh, send their data will be hijacked by the, the tunnel proxies, uh, uh, RP table rules, or even some uh, eBPF groups. 
they redirect this the data flow from the application to the Zetano proxy. The Zetano proxy uh, will do some uh, R2, R3 level uh, operations, such as the service funding and uh, even some uh, data encryption or decryption. If they don't need the R7 uh, DOVs, they will not use the viewport. If, uh, if some services uh, want to deal with the R7 operations, uh, the, the tunnel will send their data to the viewpoint, which is also a service. So if the service mesh has involved to the Sadakali's service mesh, how Kata will incorporate with those mode serverless uh, mesh. Just as I talked before, uh, Kata will use uh, the TSI to communicate to communicate from the application to the sidecar. But now there's no sidecar. How the data flow? Take the similar sidecar service mesh, for example. There's no sidecar, but there's uh, eBPF in the host kernel. So the VSOC backend will receive the data, and just as normal, they send the data into the host kernel's network static. And this time, the network flow will not be hijacked by the uh, sidecar's uh, repeatable rules. Instead, it will be in hijacked by the eBPF. So uh, this model is comp uh, very good, compatible with the Stellium sidecar service mesh. Uh, talk about the similar serverless. Uh, how about ATU's ambition the sidecar less service mesh? Uh, just I talked before, uh, the ATU sidecar less service mesh split uh, the sidecar into two parts, one is the tunnel. Uh, how this data flow from the uh, application container to the, the tunnel? Uh, just as before, if we still use the TSI plus the VSOC, the data flow will be like this. Uh, the data flow will try to uh, from the container, and the TSI will hijack uh, will uh, hijack it into the VSOC, and the VSOC backend will send those data in the VM and send the data to the network static. And at the same time, the Zetano proxy also will install some uh, RP table rules to hijack those data flow. So uh, the data flow uh, will also be hijacked by the Zetano proxy's uh, RP table rules. Those data uh, can reach to the Zetano proxy. But uh, from this, the uh, data flow uh, passed through several, se uh, several paths. One is the uh, guest, guest kernel and through the TSI and to the VM and then to the network static, the host network static and se uh, several other parts. And the last, they reached to the Z tunnel. Uh, this will improve the network's uh, uh, latency. So uh, if we want to reduce this latency, how did we do? Yes, we can, uh, we can just what the uh, DBDK did. We use the vhost use protocols to uh, communicate with the tunnel with the VSOC directly instead of through the uh, host network static. Thus, the 
application data will be sent directly from the guest to the Zetano, and they don't pass through the host network. This will uh, reduce the response latency drast drastically. So uh, let's do a, a summary about this topic. Uh, cut the containers in order to uh, reduce the issues bring out by the service mesh SAT car. We want to move the SAT car out of the guest. This is a cut containers need. Uh, at the same time, the service mesh has evolved their uh, model from the SDK to the SAT car and to the SAT car less trend. So those two trends are matched each other correctly. Uh, and by now, uh, we have uh, implemented the Kata uh, plus TSI and VSOC. This model we have developed and implemented. Uh, uh, next, I will show a simple demo about it. Uh, about the, we host user VSOC plus TSI and, and Kata and to communicate with the Zitano. Uh, this uh, we still uh, incorporate with the is to embrace the developers and uh, is still under development. This is our uh, future work. So uh, next, I will show a simple demo. Okay, uh, I had logged onto uh, my text machine. Uh, let me see. Uh, this this machine is uh, uh, Kibai's cloud. Uh, we had I had. find uh, a service a service here uh, this service uh, split two parts uh, the above one is the service definition which we defined a uh, KBI service which uh, worked on the port 8888 and then it will direct to the target port 80 this will select an application uh, index uh, next, uh, uh, the service defi defined uh, a workload, which is the uh, index server. Uh, this index server, this definition has some keywords here. First, uh, we defined it will use the sidecar inject. So uh, this service will be inject a sidecar by the H2 service. Then we defined the uh, set cars runtime. Runtime, it's run C. Yes, it's not a card container. It's run C, so that the, this set car will not run uh, in the guest. And and uh, we also engine defined a service index. It uh, is use a uh, D card. Yes, it's a card containers uh, internal uh, runtime. Now let's launch. Okay, 
we have launched this service. Let me Okay, uh, this service has been launched. Uh, and let me show how many containers it's in this pod. Yes, there are two containers in this pod. One is NGX, uh, the other is the H2 proxy injected by the H2. Uh, so let's show uh, how those containers are different. Let's first into the sidecar. Okay, now we have into the sidecar. Let me show uh, its current version. Yeah, its current version is, uh, is this one. And uh, let me show. So the NGX containers current version. Yeah, it's current version is this one, uh, they are different. This means they not work on the same kernels. Okay, let me launch another NGX client and let's uh, use the client to access the NTX server. Okay. Okay, now uh, the NTX client has been launched successfully and Let's get into the NGX client. Now we head into the NGX client. So uh, let's we'll access the service. Uh, uh, first, uh, before we access the service, we have to find the service IP. Uh, let me find the service. Okay, uh, we can see the service IP. Uh, let's into the NGX client and access the service, the service IP, and its port. Now, yes, we can uh, access the NGX successfully through the service mesh. Okay, that's all. Uh, thank you. Is there any questions? Okay, no questions? Okay, thank you.